All right, hello guys. Um, so I recently did this uh, website showing a car. It's called Alfa Romeo 33 Strato. Um, I want to add some interactive 3D part in this website, and I actually managed to do it. Like, let me show you here. So this website is uh, aimed to tell a story about this car, and it try to introduce some of the uh, key features about this car. And you can see uh, this one is about the curve flow, uh, and you can see the car. And then this one is about the butterfly door, and you can just click on it, interact with it. And the last one is about how exclusive it is. So there's only 18 cars available on this whole world. Uh, and then, yeah, this is the website I did for Alfa Romeo. And, and this is also a 3D short film I did for this car about two or three years ago, actually. So, all right, in this tutorial, I want to show, share the tips and tricks that I found while doing this project. Uh, let's say, how can you make uh, a 3D model? How can you prepare them? How can you export them uh, to something that the web can actually use? It's called GLTF, by the way. All right, so what I'm going to be using is Blender mainly. Uh, the reason why I use Blender instead of Cinema 4D is that because uh, Cinema 4D is just bad with uh, when it comes to exporting or importing GLTFs. And to be honest, Cinema 4D can't even open or import GLTF files. So uh, I'm going to use Blender. And I'll tell you why it is so superior. Because uh, as you can see, I have a few animations here stack up in the, uh, I think it's called non-linear animation. Yeah. So basically the idea is that you can embed a lot of uh, animation tracks in GLTF, but you can't even do that with Cinema 4D. They don't support it. Uh, so yeah, all the reason uh, why I need to use Blender to export and import or edit GLTF files. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is actually consider how large your model is going to be. Because if it, the model is too big or too heavy, then you're going to have a have a pretty bad time while loading, trying to load this resource onto your website. So try to just uh, optimize your file. You can see here, I, right, this file is actually uh, not not too heavy. I mean, the browser can still deal with it, but be sure to check if, um, if your model is meeting the requirement of your uh, app's performance needs. Uh, and try to delete all the unnecessary geometries. Like you can see here, I actually deleted the bottom part. I just add a very, very simple plane here, just so that my light is not going to shine through, I'm not going to see through the, um, the floor here. And yeah, just uh, try to use some uh, some techniques to reduce the geometry load payload. And all right, the next thing is that you probably want to bake materials. If you don't want to bake materials, you can uh, always uh, preview them in MATCAP and then just add the material in, in your, uh, like, say, React or some other uh, development, some other um, programming ways. And all right, the last tips, uh, the last tip is <clears throat> you probably want to stack the animation. So when you're doing animation, you probably are doing it in the in the action sheet. And then once you're done with the action sheet, you can uh, click on this push down or stash. I already did this, so that's why I don't have any uh, available dope sheet animation. I, I always push them onto the non-linear animation. Like this is what you see. And then rename it, give it a give it a good name. Uh, this is going to be what you're going to see in your React 3 application. So uh, let, let me play the file for you. So you can see um, this is the door opening scene. And then I can just deactivate it and activate the door close animation. Yeah. So once you're happy with this, you can First, well, let me stop it. And then you don't have to click on anything. Or if you want to be very specific, uh, like not exporting the camera or not exporting some lights, you can just select them and then deselect whatever you don't want. Uh, here, I'm just not going to select anything. And then go to File, Export, GLTF 2.0. And then here, you're going to see uh, your destination and also uh, be sure to check the format. Uh, I think it defaults to GLB, which um, is a binary file. And I don't think anyone would want that. <laughs> uh, usually, I would, I would change it to GLTF embedded so that it, uh, the file itself contains the uh, material textures and also all sorts of other stuff. So you can choose whether to include selected or visible objects, and then the transform, uh, and then data. Data is usually where you want to see if you have any modifier and if you want to apply them. And then here's the material uh, settings. Uh, also, I think you can, you can, if you have any image uh, image materials, you can select this JPEG. And then I think you can, um, wait, where is it? Yeah, you, you can turn on the compression. It's probably going to help you a lot, depending on how many images or how large, uh, how large material you, you have. I'm just going to set it to automatic because I don't really export anything from uh, Blender. And then the animation. Um, I don't really change a lot. Just make sure that you don't click on the use current frame, export your animation, and then give it a good name, and then export your GLTF. All right, so once you're happy with your GLTF files, uh, you can search for this uh, GLTF viewer. Uh, I'll, sh I'll share this link in the description below. Uh, you can just try to drag them in, and then it's going to show you the animation, the geo, and everything. If you have any uh, materials, it will also show the material. I don't have any, so uh, this is why it's just plain white. And then you can toggle, like if you want background wireframe to see the uh, geometry, topology, and all that. Uh, and yeah, uh, there's also the animation. I'm just going to select play all. This is what I get in the end. Uh, it's a door opening animation, uh, a tr one track for each door. This way you can actually contain the, uh, you, you can have a good control over when and where or how long, uh, or just the combo of the animation you want to play with programmatically. And so once you're done with this, um, there's also a, another place you, you probably want to go to. Uh, it's, well, I don't really know how to pronounce it. It's PMND. Uh, this is a group of people. Uh, they build really helpful toys, uh, helpful tools, uh, I should say, uh, for you to help with any 3GS related topics. And this one is a GLTF refactor tools they, they build. So if I drag on uh, the GLTF file, they're going to make it into a JSX, so a React component. 
uh, and there's also a debug panel where you can say uh, if you want shadows. Uh, if you don't, if you don't click on shadows, it's not gonna. Well, if you click on shadows, it's gonna cast and receive shadow for every one of your mesh. I'm just gonna turn it off, uh, and then if I want uh, any shadow casting or receiving, I will do it myself. Uh, and then you can see kit names or precision, or if you want to work with TypeScript, this is how you get it done. And then yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, you can just copy to clipboard, and then uh, make sure you have the file in your source directory because you can see this is actually also um, referencing the nodes. So uh, you still have to have that uh, GLTI file in your source directory. This is just a component that uh, makes it very easy to edit or uh, change some parameters. And this is it. This is my tips and tricks about how to uh, export GLTF, how to optimize it, and how to check uh, or validate it. Thank you for watching, and hope it helped you. Bye.